Okay, so it's reprocessed here. And uh, one of the things that I did is I, I put an object of gnome length. This is a two meter long stick in here. So once the reference points are collected, established on the photograph, you can choose two reference points. They have to be present on both photographs. With the reference points chosen, you can establish the units under scale and rotate. You simply write in the number and say define. And now the scale <coughs> and the units have been set for this photograph. Once the reference points are established, the scale has been created. If you're going to make a dense surface model, you have to idealize the project. And these photographs have been idealized. You'll notice there's a certain bowing on the corners here. That's because the actual photographs have been transformed and resampled based on lens calibration to be idealized. Pretty simple process. It's just a matter of choosing project, idealized project, once you've got the cameras oriented by means of their reference points. So now we're ready to uh, create our dense surface model. I could use trims, <clears throat> but I'm going to just create a dense surface from the entire photograph here based on these two photographs. Their base to height ratio is 3.7, 3.8, which is the distance between the photographs, the base, divided by the height, the distance of the camera from the object. In this case, the looter hole was hoisted up on roughly a two meter long section of stadia rod. I took one photograph and then I took a step to the right and I took another photograph. So it's about a meter apart. It's a little less than a meter apart <coughs> and about two meters high so it's a little a little under a half there. And that's a, that's a pretty good base to height ratio. I'm about um, the root mean square error is about a half a pixel. My max error is a little under a pixel. So I'm going to go ahead and sample this surface at two centimeter sampling inventory, searching above and below the, uh, the uh, depth range is a plane that goes through the model and then a search tolerance above and below that plane uh, has to be established. And because I know this looter hole isn't uh, much deeper than about a half meter, I'm only going to search 70. Well, let's go ahead and make it search a whole meter above and below. It's a good idea to take some measurements in the field and get some sense of what your search uh, terms need to be. I'm going to go ahead and crank the matching radius up to 30. I found that works pretty well for me. Um, depends on the texture, depends on the smoothness that you're looking for. Um, and the texture type with I have found with dirt pretty much always needs to be one. So, and then our meshing options, I'm going to turn these off because these were options I was using in a prior model. I'm going to go ahead and have it filter out the isolated points and I'll uh, leave it at that. So, here we go. We'll see how quickly this goes. Sometimes it can take a while. I'll go ahead and pause the video while this calculates. It's 510 now. Okay, that took about a minute, six minutes to produce. Let's go ahead and close this. And we'll open a 3D viewer to take a look at what was generated. Oops, I already had one open. Okay, so. Let's make the 3D viewer a little bit bigger. Take a look at what layers we're showing. I think we want to just look at the default layer here. And the surface was produced in another thing. So we're going to add add a new layer, put the selected object in it to clean up the default view here. We just want to look at 
Okay, so this is the point mesh that was created from the stereo pairs. You can see it's cleaned up quite a bit from the from the first version, adding those adding those additional control points, reference points, excuse me, helped eliminate these these bad points out here. So something that's useful to remember is having ample reference points distributed without, throughout the area that you're oops, trying to model. So with the uh, point, mesh, point mesh created, what we're going to do is just go ahead and save this point mesh as a